Welcome back. In case you just join us, this is Plus Politics, and we are looking at the second segment on today's program. Understate Governor Rotimi Akeridolu has responded to rumors that he was disqualified from all Progressive Congress governorship primary, saying that it is false and has declared that he is still in the Undo State gubernatorial race. He explained that the rumor was employed to distract his supporters. And also, a report by a newspaper daily has indicated that Governor Rochimi Akeridolu seems to be the favored candidate of the presidency, the one we call the Abuja. According to the report, the purported disqualification of Shegun Abraham is an indication that the national leader of the party, Bola Tinumbu, has been dumped by the presidency. Joining us to discuss this kind of intricacy that is being speculated it's still our guest in the first topic, Dakpo Daramola, a reverend, and also a political analyst. And we now have Femi Lawson, a public affairs analyst, joining us in this conversation. Good evening once again, gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Okay. Let, me, let me start with Femi, since we are uh, going to be hearing your voice for the first time tonight. Um, what do you think is playing out? The feelers we are getting in Inondo tells us or suggests that what is happening in Ondo APC, my, uh, the Edo saga might be a child's play. How true is that? Well, uh, fundamentally, I think uh, there may not be so much similarities between the situation in Ondo and uh, Edo State, even though there have been attempts you know, by political actors in, in both states to get the incumbent you know, out of participation in the Primaries of the All Progressive Congress, this is the governing party in Nigeria. But the truth is that in Ondo State, unlike Edo State, where the national chairman of the, the then national chairman of the party, El from, has succeeded in using his influence to get the then incumbent, the, the incumbent governor out of you know, the party and out of the for participation in that election, the case in Ondo is quite different. Governor Akeredolu has always been, you know, in charge of the party in the state. And as we speak today, majority of stakeholders within the party, that is elected officials of the party at the state, local government, and even the world levels, are strongly in support of the governor. Unlike, you know, the attempt to forcefully get the governor of Edo State out of the race, it's, it's not the situation in Ondo State because, like you always know, Ondo State is a peculiar state. Our people are more politically sophisticated, and it's beyond the power of any godfather or any cabal to you know, stop the governor from contesting without going through the democratic process okay. of the party. And I think you, that's what's happening in Ondo State today. Okay. That's the voice of uh, Ondo State indigenous saying that they are sophisticated. But we'll find out. Let me talk to Reverend Dagbo. What's your opening statement on this same issue that I just mentioned? We understand that there is a power play. And um, what I meant by some kind of similarity might not be that uh, 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 the governor might de decamp, but I'm looking at the interest. We know what Oshomole stood for, that direct primaries may have taken place if Oshomole were to be there. But the incumbent has his way now. He's going for indirect, but some aspirants are saying we do not support indirect. Well, I'll just quickly refresh in case anybody or those who joined us when we had this conversation the last time. Number one, to, in, in, contrary to what my brother, you know, my dear friend, you know, uh, just mentioned on air now, Governor Roti Makedolu Aketi is not popular in the state, not within his party, let's even begin with that. If he were to be popular, he would not lose his deputy governor. If he were to be popular, he would not lose his, you know, his second most important person in his cabinet, the SSG, if you are a good day. If you were to be popular, people will not be decamping you know, from the party. If you were to be popular, he will not bother himself. When the man, the deputy governor, decamped and he attempted to use the police to stop the man from even moving things out of his own, you know, from, from free movement, you know, he will not do that. If he was popular, he will not be worried with any form of primaries the party wants to make, I mean, to conduct, whether it's direct primaries or whether it is indirect primaries. It doesn't matter. If you are popular, you are popular. We all see popular politicians 
we see people, you know, rally around them or rally behind them. And anytime, you know, issues of this nature, you know, where to arise. So, number one, in terms of popularity, is not popular. Okay? And if it was popular also, the president would not lose in his own state. So, I wonder this Abuja boys connection, you know, at the end of the day, I wonder what popularity we're talking about. That is number one. If he was popular, he would not worry himself to come and even visit with the, with the so-called national, or the, sorry, not so-called, the national leader of the party. We all knew when he came. We knew what happened. He wanted the Unity Forum to adopt him, which, you know, so we know the background issues. So we cannot bamboozle viewers at home and say they don't know, you know, what, what, what is going on. Ours is to analyze it and put the facts, you know, properly before us. Now, the function of whether to conduct a direct primary or indirect primary, it is before the Ketika committee, you, you set it up. If Adams or Shem, Ali or Shemole was still the chairman of the National Working Committee, and the National Working Committee, as it was constituted, about 15 to 16 or let's say 18 members of that committee were behind the Shemole. I can tell you, it will be a, a case of, you know, uh, uh, indirect primaries in Ondo, and Ake Edolu will lose. That's the way it happened to Obaseki. Now, that is why some people gathered, and I, I have said that before, I have said that before, the reason why some people within the party gather to ensure that Oshomole is ousted in whatever way is because they know that whether you like it or not, certain things will happen, you know, like it that happened to some other people. It happened to Akil Mambode in Lagos. It happened to, you know, uh, uh, Akilade under the push, okay. you know, let the me, aggression let me, let of, me, you know, Nukula Let me interject. Let me interject. In so they saw the handwriting on the wall. Okay, that Reverend Dapo, please, in please let me interject. I, I want to stay with you. I want to stay with you before I go back to Femi because he has a lot of response to your opening remark. Let me quickly get this correctly. I remember very well covering politics that what the constitution of the party says is that direct or indirect or consensus. So why must it always be direct? Don't you also think the former chairman has some kind of personal interest? No, that, that's what I'm saying. They want indirect primaries. If you remember, remember in 2018, this issue came up. And that's one of the things that those people who fought on Shemole didn't want them to achieve. They wanted to achieve indirect primaries across board, where registered members of the party will come and vote. Article 20, okay, will have been modified. Article 20, when you talk about elections and appointments under the APC constitution, in section, subsections two and three, talks about indirect or direct primaries. So it is clear, but there was going to be a modification so that indirect primaries are cross -born. Let party members determine what will happen. It is not super delegates that come and determine. They are going to do that. But people that know that they are not popular, okay, that indirect primaries will fetch them out of office, they knew what they were fighting. I told you before, there are two critical issues before APC. 2023 is a bigger picture. And state that is domestic politics, local politics, is the other one. And those who are fighting on Shomola for one reason or the other, like, you know, I've, I've analyzed it before now, that these are some of the reasons why they were fighting okay. it. I'm not saying that Shomola is the okay. same, because I'm not a member of APC anyway. I'm not saying that you didn't goof in some areas. All I'm saying is that let's also look at other elements within the party <laughs> who were fighting the man for okay. very obvious reasons. And one of such is... Governor I'll come back to you, please. please. It's a conversation. Let's let's listen to the other party. Will have taken place, Thank you. And if it took place, you will lose. Okay, let, let's listen to the other party. Femi, I know you have quite a lot of response on this. Uh, one of the things you have said, I recall uh, uh, the election four years ago, there was this impression that you cannot allow an outsider to call the shot for you in Ondo State. It, can the governor solidly say that the people are with him? Right, thank you. I, I think the question has uh, actually addressed some of the points I would have loved to raise. Fundamentally, at no time did Governor Akredulu, from the best of my knowledge, you know, make move to get the endorsement of the Unity Forum in the All Progressives Congress. I'm not a member of the All Progressives Congress. I'm from Ondo State. I have taken Ondo State. I've lived there. And you see, the politics of people abandoning the governor in Ondo State is not new. And it has never been a determinant or the, or the basis for the assessment of a governor's popularity. Most of these people who are jumping ship today out of you know, the, the cabinet or the administration of 
Governor David Akedo, look, go and look at their history. It is their way, it is their style. There is none among these people that have not done the same with the government of Dr. Lucia Gwagagu, with the government of uh, you know, governor, former Governor Lucia Gumimiko. This, is, as, this has always been there. And how many of them fundamentally have had disagreement on the basis of the popularity of governor among we, the people of Ondo State? It has usually been because of their individual ambitions. We have all listened to Honorable Agwadrajayi, the go deputy governor, and at no time has he premised his disagreement uh, with the governor on the basis of performance, you know, or the, you know, the credibility of the government. It has always been because of their inability to achieve some personal aims and ambition. That's number, number two. You see, the politics of the All Progressive Congress, from what we have seen in those states, is different from what is playing out in some of these places. It is not also correct that Governor Kredolu has been running to seek the endorsement of one national leader or godfather. In those states, it does not work. You were all there to, ask, to, come, to monitor the election election in Ondo State in 2013, in 2016. The truth is that it then becomes a disadvantage for any politician in Ondo State to market himself on the basis of endorsement from one godfather or one political leader that is not of Ondo State. So I don't think of Governor Kredo is on that part. But when you talk about popularity, we should not be uh, assessing the popularity of the governor from the point of the number of people who, within the caucus of the party, have had disagreement with him. At what time, at what point, have you seen the people of Ondo State coming out openly to disagree with the governor or to express their displeasure with the administration of the governor till this moment? No. It has always been about one politician who is a perennial, you know, uh, uh, who is perennially known for jumping from one party to the other. They were coming to express this discussion about the government of, of the government of the uh, 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 But when it talks about these people who are actually the owner of the state, the stakeholders, the, the electorate, they don't have disagreement with this governor. Okay. And if they so, of course, feel this displeasure about the administration of Araqua, okay. they understand people are not do so. We okay. have seen them on the street almost on a daily basis expressing I mean. this. But as far as on the state is concerned today. Governor Kredoni is still popular. He's still enjoying the mandate of the people. And it is not okay. going to be on the basis of the I number mean, of people that are jumping the uh, party. Uh, it's always can like this when we are having an interesting conversation. the chances conversation. of him being re-elected. Femi, it's always like this when we are having an interesting conversation. It's so sad that my time is up for this segment. But I'm going to, I think I can predict your answer because I want you to do a bit of prediction that who is going to fly, fly the APC ticket. You have, it I think is, it's, it's a, okay. It's a glaring reality. Governor Credo, whether that through indirect primary Thank you. or direct primary, will, Your be, answer is, will, will become the candidate of the Progressive Congress on July 20th. Okay. And uh, let me ask uh, Reverend Dakpo too, please, if you can make it at that short, what do you think we get the ticket of APC? Yeah, quickly, I would say that um, I wish that uh, Governor Credo will beg the technical committee to ensure that they do indirect primaries. That's one. For one. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, let me clear here that there is, I wish also he will, Akechi will come out and say that he never visited Bola Tinubu recently. Let him come out and say that. Let him also say that he has not benefited from Bola Tinubu's support, even in becoming the governor of the state. So let's not go into all of, those, all of those drama. The point is that I am saying if Akechi is strong enough and is popular enough, let him endorse indirect primaries, let them have indirect primaries in the you know, no, uh, primaries, uh, you know, uh, process. And then I would, if he emerges as a governor, I mean, governor in then as to come back for second term, I will agree that he's popular. Okay. okay? Not, not, I don't know. Thank let you him so much. Insist on, let him insist on indirect primaries. Thank I mean, I will so that he's popular. Uh, you're doing the challenge to the governor, and let's hope that uh, whether we take your challenge seriously, or the the, the, the Convention Critical Committee will take the decision because the decision lies with them. Thank you for your time, Reverend Dagpo Daramola, a political analyst I'm and pleasure. definitely a political pundit. And Femi Lawson, the son of the soul, mm -hmm. who believes that um, it is still Akiri Dolu, we'll find out in the days to come what the reality will be. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take our plus report now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere.
the leadership of the Southeast All Progressives Congress, led by Senator Ken Namani, has met in Owerri, Imo State, to unite the APC in the zone to foster development of the region. Speaking shortly after a closed door meeting at the government house, Owerri, the state's governor, Hope Uzodima, said the leaders are ready to work together with the federal government to get the due development of the people of the zone. He said the leaders have resolved to build a stronger APC in the southeast to connect the national grid. Yes, anybody can clear. The South East has been marginalized. South East is not part and parcel of what is happening out there. All those things are speculated. The truth is that Ndibo has decided that we will follow the national party. We have, we have decided that all federal government policies have been targeted at making sure that the common man on the street have a good life, we will embrace. To that extent, we are here representing those who have proximity to the source of authority. We will direct and guide our people in service with the humanity to ensure the good things and largesse arising from the federal government to various policies to deliver our people from poverty to help well will be benefited by our people. That APC is growing in the southeast. More importantly, its name is Book, and we got a lot of it here. So we have come to show that APC is strongly supporting him, and uh, he will make us proud. He's already making us proud. We pray that he continues doing so. To assure our people, to reassure them that their brothers in government who are ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you know that uh, by the Constitution, each state is supposed to have a minimum of one minister in the Federal Cabinet. And we are here. We have uh, discussed with our only governor and uh, we wish to reassure our people that we are not staying in Abuja, in the Federal Agency Council, sleeping. We are getting what is our two share. And some of those projects, some of them are already ongoing. Those that are not ongoing are still on the table. And we have discussed with the party leader and the governor, the unknown governor we have here. Here is my take on the two topics we've looked at. The circumstances taking place around the issue of the recruitment exercise shows us that there is such a cold war between the two arms of government. The simple way to handle this issue is to ask, what does the constitution say about this nature of program? But perhaps ego and selfish interests will not let this flow smoothly, hence the back and forth. As this issue progresses, I hope our leaders put our interests at the front of their minds and hearts so they are properly guided. And as regards the rumor saying that Akeridulu was disqualified from the governorship race, I say what a pity. If truly, as he said, that his enemies orchestrated this fake news, our society is not as developed as we thought it is. What happened to honorable competitions, healthy ones for that matter? Why do our leaders have to use several types of tricks and ploys to discredit each other? I will, however, speak to the electorate, not only in Ondo State, but in all parts of the country. Know who you are voting for. Do not be blinded by the false promises and the deceptive shows put on by some of these individuals. Vote for upright people who have integrity and truly desire to serve the people. May the labors of our heroes past never be in vain. And that's my take for tonight. And thank you for staying with us. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. Plus, politics returns tomorrow, same time. Until then, have a great night.